Hey guys, thanks for joining me today for Corn Tales. I'm Miss Holly and we've got a really cool theme this week. We're going to be reading classic stories. Now I've brought along um, Corduroy. The name for the bear in the story is Corduroy and has anybody here ever seen the movie Toy Story? You know how in Toy Story you kind of wonder what do the toys get into when people aren't around? Well, this book reminds me a little bit of uh, Toy Story because you get to see what Corduroy, what kind of adventures he gets into when the other people aren't around. So um, we'll be seeing what he gets into, but this is Corduroy and it's written by Don Freeman and we're reading it with permission from Viking Publishing. Corduroy is a bear who once lived in the toy department of a big store. Day after day, he waited with all the other animals and dolls for someone to come along and take him home. The store was always filled with shoppers buying all sorts of things, but no one ever seemed to want a small bear in green overalls. Look at all the shoppers buying all sorts of stuff. And then we've got all the toys here all lined up. Little corduroy. Then one morning, a little girl stopped and looked straight into corduroy's bright eyes. Oh, mommy, she said, look, there's the very bear I've always wanted. Not today, dear, her mother sighed. I've spent too much already. Besides, he doesn't look new. He's lost the button to one of his shoulder straps. It's missing his little button there, one button. Corduroy watched them sadly as they walked away. Corduroy looks sad, and the little girl looks sad. I didn't know I'd lost a button, he said to himself. Tonight, I'll go see if I can find it. Late that evening, when all the shoppers had gone and the doors were shut and locked, Corduroy climbed carefully down the shelf and began searching everywhere on the floor for his lost button. Now, usually when I lose things, the floor is one of the first places I look, so Corduroy's probably on the right track. Suddenly, he felt the floor moving under him. Quite by accident, he'd stepped onto an escalator, and up he went. Could this be a mountain, he wondered? I think I've always wanted to climb a mountain. He stepped off the escalators as it reached the next floor, and there before his eyes was a most amazing sight. Tables and chairs and lamps and sofas and rows and rows of beds. This must be a palace, Corduroy gasped. I guess I've always wanted to live in a palace. I mean, who wouldn't want to live in a palace? He wandered around admiring the furniture. This must be a bed, he said. I've always wanted to sleep in a bed and he crawled up onto a large, thick mattress. All at once, he saw something small and round. Why, here's my button, he cried, and he tried to pick it up, but like all the other buttons on the mattress, it was tied down tight. <laughs> wonder why I can't get the button. He yanked and pulled with both of his paws until pop, off came the button and off the mattress Corduroy toppled. Bang, onto a floor lamp. Over it fell with a crash. Corduroy's not having a good time. He flew off the bed. The lamp crashed. It made a really loud sound, hurt his ears. Corduroy didn't know it, but there was someone else awake in the store. The night watchman was going his rounds on the floor above. When he heard the crash, he came dashing down the escalator. Now who in the world did that, he exclaimed. Somebody must be hiding around here. What do you think's gonna happen? Do you think the night watchman will be able to find him? He flashed his light under and over sofas and beds until he came to the biggest bed of all. And there he saw two fuzzy brown ears sticking up from under the cover. Corduroy's not very good at hiding. He didn't hide his little ears. 
Hello, he said. How did you get upstairs? The watchman tucked Corduroy under his arm and carried him down the escalator and set him on the shelf in the toy department with the other animals and dolls. Well, that was nice of the watchman. He just set him right back where all the other dolls and bears are sleeping. Corduroy was just waking up when the first customers came into the store in the morning. And there, looking at him with a wide, warm smile, was the same little girl he'd seen only the day before. I'm Lisa, she said, and you're going to be my very own bear. Last night, I counted what I saved in my piggy bank, and my mother said I could bring you home. That's awesome. Lisa must have really wanted corduroy bear. She used her very own money from her piggy bank to be able to buy corduroy. Shall I put him in a box for you? The sales lady asked. Oh, no, thank you, Lisa answered, and she carried corduroy home in her arms. I think that's the best way to carry a bear home. Just carry him in your arms. She ran all the way up four flights of stairs into her family's apartment and straight into her own room. Corduroy blinked. There was a chair and a chest of drawers and a long size, a girl size bed stood a little bed, just the right size for him. The room was small, nothing like that enormous palace in the department store. This must be home, he said. I know I've always wanted a home. We've got a big girl size bed and a perfect little corduroy size bed. Lisa sat down with corduroy in her lap and she began to sew a button on his overalls. I like you the way you are, she said, but you'll be more comfortable with your shoulder strap fastened. You must be a friend, said Corduroy. I've always wanted a friend. Me too, said Lisa, and she gave him a big hug. Oh, look how happy they both are. Corduroy's smiling. The end. Thanks for joining us for Corn Tales today. Uh, we are gonna have more classic stories all week. Miss Rachel's gonna be reading a classic story on Wednesday, and then Miss Lacey will have one Friday. So stay tuned.